All right, we have our first 49ers injury update of this 2023 season. Comes down on the day that 49ers rookies reported to the team facility for a week of conditioning ahead of training camp. And one of those rookies is likely to be placed on the PUP list next week, physically unable to perform, P-U-P. And that is their fifth-round pick, Darrell Luter Jr., defensive back out of South Alabama. According to the NFL's transaction wire, the 49ers designated Luter Jr. as physically unable to perform. He's not actually on the PUP list yet because by rule, the list doesn't open until the beginning of training camp next week. So a lot of people have gotten this wrong online. There's a slight differentiation there. They've designated him as physically unable to perform Next week, maybe he heals by next week. We don't know the extent of Luter's injury yet, but if he doesn't heal by next week and the 49ers want to put Luter on the pup list when it opens to begin training camp, they will. That's why I say that it's likely that they'll put him on that list next week. But until we know more, we don't know for sure. If you're wondering who Luter is, here are some pictures. 49ers grabbed him in the fifth round. Versatile defensive back out of a smaller school, South Alabama. He was going to be intriguing defensive back depth this year and he probably still is intriguing defensive back depth we just don't know the extent of the injury so let's talk about this for a little bit i put the keynote on the bottom i think people need to understand what the physically unable to perform list is no this is not injured reserve this is not season ending physically unable to perform the pup list if looter ends up on that or the designation which he has already been designated that applies to players who got hurt at some point doing football-related activities after they already joined their NFL team. So no, we, we know now that Luter did not enter the 49ers organization with a prior injury that's caused this. Because if that had been the case, the 49ers would designate him for NFI, which stands for non-football injury list. A non-football injury list also applies to any injuries that a player may have suffered in college. So for example, last year, Kalia Davis tore his ACL at UCF in his final season there. Kalia Davis was still recovering when he joined the 49ers as a rookie, and they put him on the NFI list, the non-football injury list. It was a football injury, but it didn't happen with the 49ers. If Darrell Luter Jr. had joined the 49ers and gotten hurt off the field, riding a motorcycle or something, they could also put him on the non-football injury list. But since he has been designated for the PUP list, not for he's not on the list yet, he's been designated as PUP. Because of that, by the definition of the term, we know that the injury happened during football-related activity at some point after Darrell Luter Jr. joined the 49ers. Now, I said it's not IR. You can remove a player from PUP at any point during training camp, right? Once the regular season starts, he's got to be on that PUP list. I think they've increased the the, uh, the time frame now to six games. It used to only be four, but I think it's now six. But during the course of training camp, a player can be on that PUP list one day and you can yank him off the day later. What you can't do is put a player on the PUP list after they've already participated in either a practice or a preseason game, right? So this is for off-season injuries. And obviously, by the definition, by the clues that we have, we can gather that Darrell Luter Jr. suffered an off-season injury. Now we need to find out how serious the injury was. We need to find out exactly what it is. News of that will likely come out next week once we sit down with Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch at actual 49ers training camp. So what does this mean for the roster? Well, we can take a look at the 49ers 90-man depth chart. I have a couple takeaways. You know, one of them is the 49ers, and this is expanding on a thought that I had uh, you know, much earlier this offseason. I think the 49ers are a little bit thin, precariously thin at the cornerback position. I was going to talk more about corners a little bit later today because we're seven days away from Veteran Report Day. That means we're Charvarius Ward days away. With Ward, with Diamond Lenore, with Isaiah Oliver, the 49ers have a nice front line of cornerbacks and in Oliver's case a nickelback but beyond that to me the depth is sketchy and I've already shaded Darrell Luter Jr. here into that pinkish red because he obviously is dealing with some sort of injury 
Ambry Thomas played well toward the end of 2021. We didn't really hear from him last season. Samuel Womack was a nice piece, especially on special teams last season, but he's going to have to make a step up here in 2023 for the 49ers to have the depth that they want at the cornerback position. So Luter is right in that mix. And, uh, you know, depending on the extent of this injury, he could be tossed out of that mix. The 49ers need their young depth to step up to provide fortification behind a promising front line of defensive backs because the second string is unproven. And I put Deshaun Jamison on the screen right now because I think this is a real opportunity for the undrafted free agent who I've highlighted right here out of Texas. Jamison's a 5'9 defensive back out of Texas. So we know that he's shorter, smaller frame, but we know he's got good short area quickness. He covered the shit out of people at Texas. And he was doing really well during OTAs as well. Multiple pass breakups for Deshaun Jamison. They did come against the third team. But if you start making plays, even if it's with the third team in an NFL practice, soon you're going to see some time with the second team. And then maybe you can earn your ticket onto the first team. So if Darrell Luter Jr., the 49ers fifth round pick, is out for any extended portion of time, just logically an opportunity should open up for Deshaun Jameson. And I was already talking about Deshaun Jameson last night as somebody who's housing returns, punts and kicks back at Texas. So you know that maybe he can contribute on special teams and the contributions he made during OTAs with that short area quickness and some physicality that you don't normally see out of a 5'9 frame. When that was on display during OTAs, I said, this guy's a player. This guy's going to give himself a shot to make the team. And anybody getting hurt in front of him will obviously help him in that effort. So it should be an opportunity for Jamison. It's obviously an opportunity for Ambry Thomas, a little less competition in there if we do see Darrell Luter uh, Jr. miss any time. And then you look at somebody like Samuel Womack. He's also going to have to step up for the 49ers because I think this is one of the thin spots of the football team. The, the depth in that cornerback room can be sketchy. And we know from the 2021 season early on when the 49ers were getting desperate, having to sign guys like Drake Kirkpatrick and Josh Norman, we know that a team can really, really struggle if it loses top line cornerbacks and the depth behind them is not good enough. So in the case of Darrell Luter Jr., uh, the 49ers had some high hopes for him. They hoped that he was going to be that one of those cogs that can provide immediate short-term relief as, as far as those depth concerns are needed. Maybe Luter still becomes that, but today's news, while still shrouded in mystery, is definitely a setback. They have designated him for the physically unable to perform list. That doesn't mean that they put him on the list yet. That, that list is not going to open until next week, but they have de designated him as physically unable to perform, which means that when the list does open up, if Luter doesn't improve within the course of this next week, he will be on it. Now, those on the list, once it does open, they still count against the 90-man roster. This is not like IR during the regular season when a player on injured reserve doesn't count against the 53-man roster. In the offseason, everybody counts against the 90-man. So PUP is simply a designation. It's not some kind of roster saver. It also is much more flexible than IR, though. I mentioned you could take a player off of PUP the day after they missed the practice while they were on PUP. And you could still do everything with the team if you are on that PUP list except for practice. So it's not as serious of a designation as IR, but it's something that does give a team who has players who were injured either during the offseason or the year prior, it does give them some potential roster maneuverability once the regular season starts. So say that Brock Purdy, who was hurt in the NFC Championship game last year, is not fully cleared to return to practice and by extension, by extension games by the time that the 49ers cut down to the 53-man roster. They can then put him on to the reserve pup list as opposed to the active pup list. It's the active pup list in training camp, the reserve pup list during the regular season. And Purdy then would not take up a roster spot. He would have to miss a certain amount of games to begin the regular season, but he wouldn't take up a roster spot. The only way that you make it onto that reserve pup list, though, is if you're on the active pup list throughout the course of 
all of uh, all of training camp. So Darrell Luter Jr., if he does land on that pup list next week and he stays there throughout camp, the 49ers can extend that into the reserve pup list for the regular season. A lot of misinformation out there, people reporting that Luter is already on pup, and that's just not true. You can't be on a list that isn't yet open for players to be on it at this point. Anyway, uh, that's the 49ers news of the day. If you have a few questions, I'll go ahead and answer them right now. Yes, Darrell Luter Jr. is injured. We don't know what exactly the injury is. We should find out within the course of the next week. And clues tell us that Darrell Luter Jr. got hurt at some point between the NFL draft and now. Because if he's designated as pup, physically unable to perform, that means that he had to have been hurt during his tenure with the 49ers in a football fashion with the 49ers, right? There's a different list for injuries that happen off the football field or before a player joins an NFL organization. That's called the non-football injury list, NFI. There's PUP and there's NFI. Kalia Davis was NFI because he got hurt back with Central Florida in college. They've designated Darrell Luter for PUP, but they haven't yet put him on the list. Cornerback depth was always a big concern for the 49ers. It remains a concern for them now. Luter hadn't proven himself yet at cornerback. I did like some of the plays that he made during OTAs. It seems that he has a really physical presence. The 49ers really like this player because of his maturity. He's already married. He already has a kid. They like that, you know, that he just has taken care of business early in his life. And John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan mentioned that as something that they like about Darrell Luter Jr. They think that that mentality translates to the way that he plays. He's assertive out on the football field. So there was a lot of hope for him, and there still probably is a lot of hope for him, but it wasn't like he was a starting player or somebody that was guaranteed playing time yet. The proving grounds start next week at training camp, and maybe Darrell Luter Jr. will be back in time to get at least part of camp in. Maybe he won't, but uh, this doesn't change the 49ers' larger outlook at all. I think they were worried about the depth in that cornerback room to begin with, and whether or not a fifth-round rookie is available at the start of training camp doesn't change the fact of or doesn't change the level of worry that the 49ers should have. They need players to prove themselves behind the starters in the secondary. This it, that doesn't mean you say it's unreal the first day. Uh, he didn't get hurt on the first day. Guys do get hurt in the offseason. Teams don't have to report anything to a pup list until the players actually show up at camp. So they haven't seen Darrell Luter Jr. for a month and a half since the better since the since the mandatory mini camp. So he probably got hurt at some point during his offseason training. It happens every year when teams have players convene for training camp. They open up their pup list, and at the start of camp. Uh, the coach will list off the handful of players who might have gotten hurt in July. Unfortunately, it's a reality of the sport. We don't know how serious this is, but I wouldn't act like this is evidence that the 49ers are somehow snake bit. Mike asks, so should Purdy be on pup next week? There's a good chance that he will be. I don't know where Purdy exactly is in terms of his recovery. But if they don't think that he's ready from day one, they could put him on pup so Purdy can participate in all meetings, just not in practice. And then if he's ready on day three or day four, the 49ers can activate Purdy from pup. There's no harm and no foul in doing that, right? So just in case the injury lingers and stretches out into the regular season, that way you don't have to use an IR spot for Brock Purdy. You don't compromise his whole season. You can put him on pup at the beginning of training camp, and that is potentially something that gives you more flexibility. What you don't want to do with Brock Purdy is have him practice and then have a setback because then you can't put him on pup anymore. So I think if Purdy is 90%, but not quite 100% of the way there, unable to practice uh, day one, which is Wednesday, July 26th, I do think the 49ers will put him on pup before that first practice and then reserve the right to activate him at any time. If the D-line balls out, corner won't be an issue, Andy Chris says. I think corner is always an issue. I think that you need both ends of your defense to be at least competent, right? If the defensive line is awesome, amazing, overpowering, that takes some responsibility away from the cornerbacks because they don't have to cover as long. But if they totally suck, it's going to be an issue against short passes, right? You've got to have competence on the back end to at least buy your pass rush a couple seconds to get to the quarterback. So it all matters on the defensive side of the ball. 
Can you walk through practice on pup? I don't think so. I think anything on the field, walk through practice, I think that's all considered practice activity. So I don't think that you could walk through. I think that you could do all the stuff in the meeting rooms, but you can't be out on that practice field. Gregis says the only injury that would cripple this team is if Bosa or Williams were to get significantly hurt. Otherwise, the depth is three deep at every position. I mean, it's hard to argue with that. The 49ers are really good. I, I, I wouldn't say they're three deep at every position, but they're two deep at most. Obviously, if you lose Nick Bosa, he's a complete difference maker. If you lose Trent Williams, who's your left tackle? But yes, they have built a robust roster. I would say that injuries to certain guys like Eric Armstead, Javon Hargrave would really compromise the 49ers, though. I mean, they they lost their defensive tackles last year before they got Hargrave, and it became a really sketchy situation on the defensive interior. So, I mean, you never really know what you truly have until that depth is forced into action. But I do think that the 49ers are as fortified as any other roster in the NFL. It's just that NFL rosters have trouble be truly being too deep at every single position because of salary cap and roster size limitations. George Kittle also getting hurt. That's tough. Kyle Juszczyk getting hurt. That'd be tough. I see those answers pouring in. Center would also be a question. Although they have John Feliciano now for that very reason. Plug Feliciano into that center position as a veteran who started there for the New York Giants last year. Did a good job. That helps a lot in case Jake Brendel does go down. Ambry or a camp vet who's going to get cut for cornerback depth? Well, obviously you got Ambry Thomas. Let's look at the other options for the 49ers. Samuel Womack, he's a veteran now. Second year, Luter shaded there for the injury designation. You have Trey Swilling and A.J. Parker. You're talking about camp veterans. Those are two guys that may get some more run now. And you have Deshaun Jamison, who I talked about a little bit earlier. I do think that this is an opportunity for Deshaun Jamison. 5'9 Shutterbug out of Texas. Returnability. I mean, he was he was covering during OTAs for the 49ers. Exciting player may have a little bit more of an opportunity now if Darrell Luter Jr. does indeed end up on PUP. 49ers Bandit really likes Womack. Womack's got long arms, good speed, can play inside and out. You know, for a 5'9 guy, that's impressive. Normally you see a 5'9 guy show up and they're like, no, you're going to the inside. You're going to be a slot corner. Womack got some run at outside corner last year. The 49ers really believe in the fact that he's a burner. They think he's got the speed to play on the outside. As far as Luter goes, I think they were talking about adaptability too. And we'll see when he returns from this injury where exactly he's going to line up. No on-field rookie stuff today. It is about conditioning for the 49ers rookies this week. So the rookies reported today. It's July 18th. This is just a chance for them to get up to speed, get in a little better shape before the veterans show up next week on the 25th and the 49ers begin practice on July 26th. All right, well, that's been your 49ers update. This is a look at Darrell Luter Jr. Designated as pup, physically unable to perform today as 49ers rookies reported. And I'm guessing underwent some sort of physical. So something happened in between OTAs where we saw Darrell Luter Jr. and he was impressive. And now in the past six weeks or so, Luter must have suffered an injury. He's not officially, though, on the pup list just yet. Don't get your fake news from elsewhere. I mean, a lot of people are saying he's on pup. It's like, no, pup isn't even open. The active pup list opens with training camp next week, although the 49ers have designated him as physically unable to perform. So if Luter doesn't fully heal up and is unable to practice by around this time next week, then the 49ers will officially put him on the pup list and they could yank him off at any point once he is healthy. This is not injured reserve. All we know for sure is that this is not an NFI designation. We know that Luter was hurt at some point after the draft, after the draft, before right now, obviously. And this might be an opportunity for somebody like Deshaun Jameson. All right, that's your little recap. Like the video, sub to the channel. We'll talk to you all very soon.